pioneers of the internet imagine cyberspace as a realm free from governmental intervention. But as cyberspace has expanded into all areas of human life, policymakers and lawmakers have become increasingly involved in managing it, with laws, regulations, strategies and policies on issues ranging from the digital divide to online crime. It's crucial that these regulatory frameworks are balanced and respect human rights, as well as ensuring the security of systems. Human rights defenders have a crucial part to play in this. By the end of this video, you'll understand the nature of policies, strategies, laws and regulations concerning cyberspace, how they're made and the role of human rights defenders in shaping them. What do we mean when we're talking about laws, regulations, strategies and policies? These terms can seem interchangeable at first glance, but the differences become clear when we look at their enforcement power. Policies and strategies are largely conceptual. In simple terms, a policy sets goals while a strategy outlines the steps needed to achieve them. Non-compliance with them does not incur a penalty. There are plenty of examples of national cyber policies and strategies. According to the International Telecommunications Union, over 70 countries now have national cybersecurity strategies, while the EU cybersecurity strategy is an example of this trend at the international level. Policies and strategies can lead to the adoption of laws and regulations. These establish a system of rules which prescribe or forbid behaviour, actions or procedures. And crucially, unlike policies and strategies, they can be enforced with penalties. For example, earlier in the series, we saw in 2016, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India banned the differential pricing of data services, a move which has effectively put an end to zero rating in India. Laws and regulations are made at both the national and international level. At the national level, laws are adopted by the legislature. Regulations follow laws and establish procedures on how to comply with laws. At the international level, specific treaties establish laws between countries. These laws may be directly applicable to states or may have to be translated into new laws at the national level. Although a global cyber treaty doesn't exist, there are various regional frameworks relevant to aspects of cyber policy. For example, frameworks like the EU Network and Information Security Directive and the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection provide rules that have to be adopted later in national laws. But what about the processes involved in creating these laws, strategies, policies and regulations? Policymaking typically brings in actors from across a range of groups, including government, business and civil society, and goes through five stages – issue identification, problem solving, drafting, implementation and evaluation. Human rights defenders can get involved at any of these stages. Lawmaking is typically less flexible and less open to other stakeholders than policymaking. Depending on the country, national laws can be proposed by either the legislative or executive branches of government. Typically, a bill is then drafted and discussed with opportunities for amendment by elected representatives. In some cases, a multi-stakeholder consultation is held. The bill is then put to a vote. Many bills never actually become laws. At the international level, both laws and policies are developed in a range of intergovernmental and multi-stakeholder forums. Depending on the nature of the forum, these processes can produce recommendations, conclusions, standards, binding and non-binding treaties. With international lawmaking specifically, governments have to achieve consensus on binding treaties. Due to differences between the aims, structures and ideologies of different states, this process can take many years. Cyber policy issues don't exist in a vacuum. From cybersecurity to access, all of them are underpinned by the regulatory frameworks we've just gone through. And so if we want a rights respecting cyberspace, we need regulatory frameworks which will support it. That means laws, regulation, policies and strategies which reflect human rights values and which are arrived at through open, inclusive and transparent processes. Regulatory frameworks which don't reflect these values can directly undermine the enjoyment of human rights, as we've seen throughout the series. It's therefore crucial that human rights defenders engage closely with the processes which shape these frameworks. The Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers offers a good example of how human rights defenders can engage with the structures that underpin policymaking processes. 
In 2014, an ICANN cross-community working group was tasked with developing mechanisms to ensure accountability during its transition away from US oversight. Human rights issues were not initially made part of the process, but a few members of the working group spoke up in favour of human rights, and in the end, a special provision in ICANN's bylaws was created, requiring ICANN to respect human rights in future policymaking. The HIPCAR project is an interesting example of a policy and lawmaking hybrid, combining both regional and national processes. The project was led by the International Telecommunications Union, the Caribbean Community Secretariat and the Caribbean Telecommunication Union and brought in different stakeholder groups to draft guidelines and model legislative texts aimed at harmonising cyber-related policies and legislation in the region. As a result of this approach, human rights considerations were included and discussed at every stage of the process. And the guidelines provided the basis for model legislative texts, giving human rights defenders new tools to push for rights-respecting policies and laws at the national level. So how can you as a human rights defender get involved? The first step is to decide on your approach. You might want to prioritise lawmaking, which produces binding and enforceable outcomes. On the other hand, policymaking can provide more opportunities for engagement. Then find out when public consultations on policies and laws are happening and get involved. Advocate as early as possible for the inclusion of human rights concerns. At the deliberation and drafting stage, there's often an opportunity to submit comments. If cyber policy and laws are made behind closed doors in your country, speak out about this. Advocate for more open, transparent and inclusive processes. And if a law passes which undermines human rights, challenge it in court. Working with other stakeholder groups is also crucial. Building alliances with businesses, the technical community and other NGOs can strengthen your advocacy.